Have you ever seen shots that zoom from space straight down to a city or orbiting around the objects like in a movie? Most people think that it requires either having a drone or expensive software, but I've already created a full tutorial on how to use Google Earth Studio for beginners, which is a very simple and a totally free web application which doesn't even require installation on your computer. And today I want to show you why this tool is actually underrated and why it might be one of the most powerful tools for creators at this moment. If you've seen my tutorial, you know the basics, a few keyframes, specific camera path, adjust the lighting and boom, you have a cinematic shot. But now I want to compare it with other popular tools like Blender, After Effects, Unreal Engine and a few others and explain why Google Earth Studio often comes out ahead for creators. Unlike the other tools, Google Earth Studio is ready to use for cinematic shots right out of the browser, which is why I think it's so underrated. I've used it for intros and some of my projects, and even though it's powerful, most creators don't know about it. Maybe because it's free, maybe because it's hidden behind an application form that you need to fill in and be approved. And that's what confuses people. They think they will not be approved for some reason, but it takes literally a few hours to be approved and I haven't heard about anyone who was not approved. Think about what it does. It lets you animate satellite imagery like a real camera, orbiting, zooming, flying anywhere on Earth. And by the way, you can do that not only on Earth, but also on the Moon and Mars. That's so sick. And every moment, every path is controlled with keyframes, just like in professional software, but in a more simplistic way. You don't need a massive rendering farm because all rendering happens in the Google Cloud, not on your computer, but in the cloud. You just get a download link on your email with your ready video, and that's it. You don't need years of 3D modeling experience. You just create. Now, you might think, why not using Blender or After Effects or Unreal Engine? I mean, they're all great tools, but here is why Google Air Studio often beats them for certain projects. So let me now go tool by tool and explain it in more detail. So let's take Blender first. I mean, Blender is incredibly powerful. You can make almost everything, like full 3D worlds, characters, like animation, effects, super realistic textures of moving water, people, cars, I mean, you name it. But it takes time, like a lot of time to model a realistic city or terrain from scratch or even using Google Maps data with some shady plugins. I mean, you basically just get raw data from Google Maps that you afterwards need to know like how to animate and how to make all those textures look great. And if you just start with Blender, it will take weeks until you get to the level of making something similar that Google Earth Studio offers out of the box. Google Earth Studio, on the other hand, gives it to you instantly, real world accuracy with satellite imagery in minutes. And that's the first big advantage, speed and realism without building everything almost from scratch like you would have to do in Blender. Now let's take Adobe After Effects. Well, I love After Effects. I use it quite often and After Effects is amazing for motion graphics and compositing, but creating a Earth flyover? I mean, good luck with that. You'd need some plugins, some satellite textures or probably even 3D assets. Uh, because there are no any maps in After Effects. So you would have to create them from scratch. But I saw many people playing around with the videos uh, that they first rendered with Google Air Studio and then they exported it to After Effects because when you render a video in Google Air Studio, you can actually include 3D tracking points uh, into your exported project and you then can use this 3D tracking data to insert some objects or text in the videos while working in After Effects. And that's a very cool feature. But to be honest, that's just an extra layer on top of the video that anyways you would have to create first in Google Earth Studio. And not everyone needs to incorporate text in their videos. Yes, you cannot add any text inside of Google Earth Studio project. And that's unfortunate, but 
I don't remember I desperately needed it in any of my videos. Next tool, Unreal Engine. And to be 100% honest, I'm not very familiar with this tool, but I watched several tutorials about Unreal and it's a dream for games and cinematic rendering. I mean, they're like stunning visuals, like total control of the image or what you can do with it. But it's heavy, it's technical, and to be honest, it's just an overkill for simple cinematic maps. If you need to have a real-world map, you would need to install first a separate plugin, which is called Cesium for Unreal, that then will stream map via APIs. I mean, ugh, that's just too complex, too complicated for someone who wants just to create a powerful cinematic effects quickly. Meanwhile, Google Earth does 80% of this magic out of the box, like straight in your browser, like no plugins, no game engine, no GPU stress, like pure gold. Guys, I also researched a tool called Mapbox since I've heard a lot about it and Mapbox is perfect if you want to build interactive maps, apps or dashboards that visualize data in a really detailed way. You can make your map look exactly how you want, down to the smallest detail, but Mapbox is really built for developers and designers who want functional maps, not filmmakers looking for cinematic shots. So you cannot easily create those dramatic flyovers or transitions that make a scene feel alive. And I couldn't find a single example on the internet of someone who did that. So if your goal is to make your audience feel the place rather than see the data, it's not the best choice. Another tool I wanted to touch on is ArcGIS Earth by ArcGIS. I know, very complicated name. So GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. So basically this is a company and they have like dozens of different products for regular people like myself, for aerospace, for military organizations. And I tried just one of their products, the one I've already mentioned, ArcGIS Earth, but it's not really built for cinematic storytelling rather for looking for specific maps or gathering data, at least yet. But I downloaded and tried their desktop app to play around with, and it even looked like Google Earth Studio when I first opened it. But I would say it's a bit overcomplicated and you need to look for specific maps of places, like there's no like one map of everything. It's not so straightforward and I couldn't achieve the cinematic effect I was looking for since while well, rendering, 3D layers were disappearing for some reason and I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. Kind of a nice tool, but it requires a lot of time to get used to, to learn all those settings it offers, which are not so intuitive compared to Google Earth Studio. But I think that this tool has the most potential to be an easy to adopt tool for quick cinematic map flyovers if they will be possible at some point. So yeah, that's ArcGIS Earth. Also, I was trying to see if Apple Maps or Microsoft Bing Maps have something to offer. And actually, there is something like Apple Maps flyover feature, but it's a proprietary feature for Apple devices only. and. Also, I saw that controls are very limited. Moreover, even if you make a video of the screen, you cannot use it on YouTube legally because Google Air Studio, for example, allows you to use their videos under some conditions. So I am not convinced Apple Maps Flyover is a good tool for filmmakers at all. And talking about Microsoft Bing Maps, well, nothing that would really catch my eye or be helpful for filmmakers. It has some weather and time of the day controls, but they don't create the desired effect because the texture is loading forever. And there is a limited amount of 3D objects, really choppy movements on the map if you would decide to record the screen. And the flyover itself is limited to just specific places and specific angles, so it's not customizable at all and leaves me with an extremely small amount of settings that I can use. The verdict, I cannot suggest this tool for my fellow creators. Sorry. Okay guys, to summarize, yes, there are other tools that are powerful, that are interesting and somewhat usable, but Google Earth Studio hits the sweet spot. Real-world accuracy, cinematic freedom, simplicity, that's what I love. And the best part, you don't need a supercomputer. You don't need years of training. You just 
create. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. It really helps the channel. And apparently, YouTube thinks that you will like this video over here. So check it out and see you in the next one. Cheers.